Hi, I'm Kamana Nagayev. Today I want to show you the steps of performing disaster recovery using RMAN. Disaster recovery is used when you lose the entire database, all data files, control files, radio log files and all parameter files due to the media crash or the mistake of the system administrator. Today's scenario, I'm using two virtual machines. In the first machine, I have a running database. After taking full backup of the database with RMAN, I will delete all data files. Then I will copy RMAN backups of the database to the second server where I have installed only Oracle software and perform disaster recovery of the database using these backups. Let's start the demonstration. Now let's switch to the first virtual machine and connect the database. Get the database name. The database name is DR. Now I create a table and insert one row. We'll query this table after performing the disaster recovery. Now I connect to RMAN and take backup of the database. Here we must make sure that we have enabled auto backup of control file in RMAN configuration. Now let's check it. Here it is. Now the auto backup of control file is enabled. Let's take the cap of a database. We have full backup of the database. We are ready to delete all database files from the operating system. As we will restore the data files to their original locations, we need to get the list of directories where all database files reside and create them on the second virtual machine. To get the directory list of all database files, create the related data dictionary use. To get the list of all data files, query with all data file view. To get the list of all radio log files, query the radio log file view. To get the list of all control files, query the radio log control file view. From the result of above queries, it seems that all database files of this database resides on U01 Oracle Product 1020DB1 or Data DR directory. Now get the list of directories where trace files resides for these query dump test parameters. That's the main directory of the trace files. Now let's note these base directory paths in any editor. Press Ctrl Shift T and open new terminal window. Then call JDIT executable and copy past the directory names. Now, delete all database files, as we are running on a Linux operating system. We don't need to shut down the database, we can delete all database files even when database is running. Go to the Aura Data folder and delete all files using RM command. Now, check the status of the database. Now, let's copy all backup files to the second virtual machine to perform a disaster recovery. First of all, switch to the second machine and create the directories that is required for database files, trace files and for the ARM and backup files. This is our second virtual machine.
in this directory we'll store ARM and backups. Before starting the copy process, we need to connect from the first virtual machine to the second one. For this, both Ethernet configuration of virtual machines should be set to host only parameter. Go to the summary view and double click on the Ethernet settings and choose host only. Now let's check the IP addresses of the, each virtual machine. This is the IP address of the first virtual machine. And this is IP address of the second virtual machine. Let's copy it. And switch to the first machine. Now go to the flashback area where all ARM and backups resides and start copying backup files to the second server. Now it's time to start the disaster recovery. Close the first virtual machine completely and switch to the second machine. The first step will be restoring parameter file from the auto backup. For this, export the Oracle SID environment variable and connect to the RMAC. Start the database with no mind mode using a dummy parameter file. Get the name of auto backup file. Here it is. Let's copy it. Now use restore sp file command to restore sp file from auto backup file. The sp file has restored. Let's check it. Oracle Home, yes, here it is. Now restore control files from the auto backup. Start the database with no mount option to use restored SP file. Now restore control files.
Now open the database with mount option. And try to restore all data files. The restore command fails because Armin wasn't able to find the backup files in its repository. Using cattle command will register the backups to the Armin repository. To register all backups files at TMP backup folder, use catalog start with command. Now use restore database command to restore all data files. Armand restored all data files. Now it's time to recover the database using the recover database command. Armand applies all available archived read log files. At last, Armand searches for subsequent log file which is not available and wasn't generated and returns an error. Now it's time to open the database with reset logs option. The database successfully opened, connect to the SQL plus and create the table which was created on the first server. Here it is. In this tutorial, we have performed disaster recovery of the database on the different server using RMAN backups. At first, we took backup of the database using RMAN. Then we deleted all database files and created manual media crash. Next, we copied Armand backups to the second server and started performing disaster recovery by restoring parameter file, control files, and data files subsequently. Then recover database by applying archived read log files and opened it with reset logs option. However, we can automate this process by using a simple RAM block in Armand. Let's delete all database files from the second server and copy all Armand commands that were used in the previous recovery process. This is a RAM block that will be used in disaster recovery. Let's copy it. Connect the scale plus and down the database with abort mode. Connect to Armen and paste it. Now open the database. The disaster recovery of the database is finished. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorials.